Hi there YouTubers and 3D Studio Max enthusiasts, welcome to my 3D Corner. In today's episode we're going to talk about computers and what computer do you need to buy to create 3D renderings. So I'm going to show you two different computers today that uh, I own. One is very old, uh, it's like 10 years old technology and the other one is a brand new computer that I just bought uh, this month. So I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to look for when you buy a computer and uh, I'm also going to show you how you can buy a cheap computer, a very cheap uh, computer and uh, but the only problem is that you need to make it yourself. So if you are ready and if you are curious about making a computer under 1000 euros, let's move on. First of all, we're going to talk about the components of a computer. Here I have a page that is called computerinfobits.com uh, where we can see the components of a computer. So the main components of a computer are the motherboard, the CPUs, it can be one or two. Uh, the CPU cooler of course is going for the TPU, it's just cooling the CPU. All kind of, of extension cards, the RAM, which is very important, the hard disk the, and the power supply unit. All of these components, they go together in the computer case. So you need to have enough space in the computer case to put all these components inside. And of course you have also the uh, other components like uh, keyboard, speakers, monitor and mouse and also printers which uh, we don't have in here. So the first and the most important one in our case if you are talking about uh, uh, rendering with the uh, Corona Render or V-Ray which are using the CPU is the CPU of course. So I have here two computers that I own as I said earlier. One is an old computer with a 10 years old almost 10 years old technology that has two processors CPU E5-2665 at 2.4 megahertz with eight cores. So being two processors, this means that there are eight cores plus eight cores. It's in a total of 16 cores. On the right side, I have an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X3D with 16 cores. So in total, 32 uh, threads. So this has 32 threads, the one on the left side being composed by two processors, each, each one with eight cores. And the one on the right side has only one processor directly with 60 cores. So in 10 years, what they managed to do, they just doubled the number of cores in one processor. I'm talking here about, this is a Xeon, so it's a high-end processor, and this is more a user, like a gaming processor. So it's not a high-end processor. The one on the left side has 64 gigs of RAM, you, said, you can see it here, and the one on the right side has 128 gigs of RAM. This was the maximum of uh, the RAM that uh, you could have on this one. Here I could also have 128, but at that moment I didn't want to invest so much money on the, on the RAM. Of course, both of them, they have also two hard disks, two SSD hard disks, which is a solid state drive. As you can see here, this is a very fast hard disk. Yeah, it, so this is really good for having it also for your Windows and also for your 3D Studio Max. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to show you, we're going to make a test for both of these uh, computers to see which one is faster and how fast it is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use uh, the benchmark from Corona Render. I'm going to leave a link in the description and let's see how fast it's going to render this scene. So as you can see here it's show, on the right side is showing us uh, uh, the estimate uh, remaining so almost one minute and also the race total which is 4000 race. Don't forget that this is a computer with two processors and this is how fast it is. So the benchmark is done. As you can see, it used the Corona 1.3. I'm as I said, I'm gonna leave a link in the description where from where you can take this uh, benchmark and you can also use it on your computer. Here is uh, telling us uh, processor that we use. So it's an Intel Xeon CPU E5-2665 
at 2.4 gigahertz by two. So this means there are two of them and the real CPU frequency was 2.7. And the render time for this processor was one minute and 50 seconds. So this was quite a good time, I think. And now let's make the test for the other processor. As I said, now we are making the test for the second processor, which is the AMD 7950. Now let's see how fast it's gonna go. Okay, so it's done. As you can see here, it's telling us what type of processor we have. As I said, the AMD Ryzen 9 7950 uh, X3D with 16 core and real CPU frequency was 4.6. So almost double the frequency from the from the other computer that has the, the Xeon processors. Uh, the render time for this computer was the 40 seconds. So, so 110 divided by 40 means 2.75 times faster than, uh, than the Xeons. So, okay, what making this processor to be 2.75 times faster than the Xeons, which are two, but in the same case, we have the same number of cores and the same number of threads. Of course, it's not the same brand, but uh, this is not the purpose of, the, of, this, uh, of this lesson. So as you can see, even though the two computers have quite similar cores 16 cores and 16 cores by two processors as i said and one has 128 gigs of ram and the other one has uh, 64 it doesn't really matter here because the scene that we had is quite small so it doesn't imply having more or less ram in the computers so even though as i said the one on the right side is 2.75 times faster than the one on the left side uh, let's see the difference between these two processors. So as you can see here on the left side, I have the Intel Xeon E5. So the one on the left side has total cores, eight cores and 16 threads. It can max turbo frequency to 3.1 and the base frequency is at 2.4 and it has a 20 mega Intel smart cache. So how is it working? So in the moment that you have a scene and you send it to render, the whole scene is gonna load into the RAM because the processor doesn't have enough space to take all that information directly in the processor and to process it. So because he doesn't have that much space to take all that information, which is can be like a hundreds of mega or even a couple of gigas of information. So what is he doing? He's using his smart cache. So all the information is going to the RAM. So you load all this, your scene to the RAM. And then from there, he's gonna load in the smart cache, which is 20 mega in this case, and he's gonna process that information. So he's gonna take each time the 20 mega of information from the computer's RAM. On the other case, on with the AMD, which has also 16 cores and it can boost, max boost clock can go until 5.7 gigahertz. So it's almost double from the Intel one. He has an L3 cache of 128 megas. So this is a very huge difference between these two. This has 20 mega, this has 128. So the Ryzen can process parts of 128 mega each time when you he's loading it from the uh, RAM. So here, if you go lower, you can see that the, the RAM that the Intel is using on this processor is 800, 1600. So the, the memory types that uh, this computer is using is 800, 160 and so on. On the other hand, the one on the right side, it can go until 5200. So this is quite high. So it's starting with 3600. So it's already double than the Intel one and it can go to 5200. So this is also a big difference between these two. But as you can see, the total difference between the Intel and the AMD one is 2.75. But let's see if the difference on price is also 2.75. So as you can see here, I went to eBay because this is a processor that is not made anymore the Xeon and I looked for some prices for this uh, processor so as you can see here there is a guy from United States that is selling this processor for $35 in this case almost 35 we have two of them so this means $75 on the other hand the AMD Ryzen 9 which is 2.75 faster than the two Xeons here we have it even cheaper than that we have it with $8 on the lower part so we have two of them, Intel Xeons, eight cores, E5, 2665, 2.4 gigahertz with an LGA 
11 CPU, it's $8. So you can buy these two processors with $8. And on the other hand, on the right side, we have the AMD Ryzen, which is seven, almost $720. So as you can see, the difference between these two is huge. So if I calculate now and 719 divided by eight, it's 89 almost 90 times more expensive so the amd ryzen is almost 90 times more expensive than two xeon processors e5 2665 so is it worth it to buy a brand new computer than to use an old one well you are the one who needs to decide because as you can see here for this processor you need to buy also a motherboard and also the ram and so on but i guarantee you that you can go with a computer like this one under $1,000. So that's a very, very big difference. And this computer, the AMD Ryzen, with the latest graphic card and with 128 gigs of RAM and with an SSD and so on, it was almost 5,000 euros. So between these two computer is a very, very huge difference. Of course, you're gonna say, hey, but I don't know how to make my own computer and or I don't know how to, I don't have anybody who can help me with that and so on. But what you need to understand is the fact that today you can find almost anything on YouTube. So everyone can explain you and to tell you exactly what you need to buy or what you need to do. So what I did next, I made a list with all the components that you need to create a computer to have a good, a relative, uh, good price for a graphic card so uh, let's start so the first thing that you need to buy is the cpus as you can see here there are two cpus one is costing four dollars plus shipping you have a total of 31 dollars so this is very very cheap for buying these kind of cpus as you can see as you saw the test earlier it can be quite fast even though they are 10 years old they can be quite fast then you need a, a case of course here i just took a case from the internet the price can vary and can be a around $100. You can also go cheaper, but you can also go more expensive, depends on you. Then you need the PCU, which is the source of your computer. This is also around $100, 105 in this case, but you can also find it cheaper than this. Then you have the RAM. It's going to be a total of uh, 64 uh, gigas of RAM, which is gonna cost you around $128. Then the motherboard, as you saw already on eBay, it's around $250. Then you need two, two coolers for the processors. These are going to be around $60. I have here, I found on a website with 57. Then you have, you need the graphic card. Here I found one on eBay. It can be shipped from United States, it's around $220. I think this is a very good graphic card. Still, it's a little bit old, you could say. It's like five years old, but it's still a very, very good graphic card. So you can use it without any problem in uh, 3D Studio Max. And it's an eight giga of RAM graphic card. As you saw on my old computer, I have a 1070, which is older than this, and it's still working very well on that computer. Then you need an SSD where you to keep your Windows and all your programs of 500 gigs. Uh, this is gonna cost you around $50. And I also added here a Seagate Barracuda of two terabytes where you can keep your textures and so on. Uh, of course, you can put a bigger one than this, you have four terabytes or a six terabytes, but this depends on how much uh, uh, space do you need. And this is also it's gonna cost you $50. So in total for this computer, you're gonna pay around $991. I think this is quite a cheap price uh, taking in account that for a $5,000, you're just gonna render almost three times faster. So if I'm buying three computers like this, I'm gonna have a $2,700 in total. So it's half the price of the AMD and it's gonna render as fast as that one. So please do, yeah, be aware that uh, buying the latest technology with the latest processors, sometimes maybe it's not the best idea because you can also buy like older technology, these uh, processors that are very, very cheap right now on the market and you can still get really good results. And in the end, it's not about how fast you are, it's about how good you are in making this uh, 
these 3D renderings. If you found this uh, video useful, please don't forget to subscribe. I'm gonna leave uh, this list of components on my uh, YouTube channel uh, so you can take it from there in case you want to make your own computer. And uh, yeah, please don't forget to subscribe if it's your first time here. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Also, you, you can follow me on my Patreon page. I'm posting here stuff that uh, you can have early access to it. And also you're gonna find here all kind of 3D models that I'm saving all the time. And also in the future when I'm going to, I'm always giving all the things that I'm creating on my, uh, on my Patreon page. So if you are happy with uh, what you learned today, please don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye.